the well, the blessed well in Brown's Castle. There was cures in it. There's a tree down there. The tree is long gone out of it. But there's another tree there. Is that, I mean, the tree that was there probably could have been there a hundred years like It was an oak tree. And all there was medals and crutches and things were left there because of people that would have, they would have believed that they got some cure. But there was one gentleman and uh, he, was a, he used to go down there quite often for, to walk, which people done years ago to pass the time. And um, he went across a roadway, a laneway, with a bus, but from one road to another, like, um, and it would have been a walkway. There. Partially the lane is still there. But anyway, what he not only done was he go down there and for, the, for his walk, and uh, he would rest at the well. Uh, near the well, at, at, the, at the long side of the tree. But the man had a, a huge cyst on his neck. And apparently, uh, from my father, which has passed away quite a long time ago, this is how I got the story, that he, uh, he fell asleep, he went to sleep, and which he normally might, might do as well, like, you know, resting. But after some time, he, about maybe an hour or whatever it was, uh, when he, he wakened up anyway, apparently the cyst had actually uh, had, had just gone, uh, from a, had disappeared like. And uh, this story, like, uh, I, believe, I believe it to be true, uh, but the man actually, the cyst went like, and the, the man's name actually is long, is, a man by the name of Johnny Adams was the name. And I remember the, the old cottage that was there, the ruins of the old cottage. Where he actually lived, like you know, but that was a story like it was told, like. Uh, but my father, because he actually came from down that part around that area, like you know, and you would have known the man actually. Down in West Cork, in, uh, originally, when I was already in, in my teens, I was full of warts on my knees, and my hands, and my grandfather that lived out in Court McSherry when we were out visiting one day, and we were on bikes in Gang of Young for and he turned around and he said, hey Box, I said, when you way back to go into the Abbey, I said, in Timmy League, and throw a few coins in, and he gave me a few coins. It wasn't much, it was pennies and tuppences, or halfpennies. And he threw me, he said, throw them into the way to see and wash your hands, and throw the, the water with your hands up on your knees, because we were all short trousers that time. And my knees were rotten with uh, warts. And I turned around and uh, that was coming on to the, my communion. And he turned around and I got a long trousers from my communion. And he turned around and uh, I didn't really realise that the water had gone off my knees. Until the, the tailor said to me, God, he said to me, all your knees are all marked, what's there, what are they for? I said, but should they have the warts? There's no warts on your knees, he said. And that was like three weeks after, my hands and my knees were totally clean of warts. From the, 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 the water of the well. Well down below. Yeah. Should have the stone there. That if a it is well known that if a person lies in it three oh, times the, for the pain in their backs. The the, the what you call them, the Simon's bed and yeah. the best I mean that's going in history, like going back and actually even to this present day or up to now as well, every year they do have a they do have prayers down at that well down there and the bed is just down a small bit. But uh, the bed of people have believed, have believed that they did get cures, and even people just to just chip off a small little bit of rock, like even if they had a toothache to chew, just to put a small little bit of rock in their mouth, small little flake, like you know what I mean. And people actually chipped off bits of rock to bring with them, like as a kind of like people go to different places, maybe around the country or religious places, to pick up something like to bring it back with them, like you know that. It, is to, to have, to have a belief in those mm -hmm. things, like which I uh, think I respect as well, like you know. Uh, uh, but, but I mean, uh, there two years ago, we had a person from the department down here at the resort centre, and he was a young chap, our youngest chap, and he was walking kind of crooked, and I said to him, You're a black boy, and I've been to this and I've been to that, and they talk about operating on it now, and that nice said about the St. Mons bed to him, yeah. and that's how we went down to it. Yeah. And he laid out on it. And he turned around and he didn't, the next day he rang me and he said, I didn't feel it that, but he thought there was something. I said, You have to do it three times, you know. And mm. he drove down from Dublin, especially, to do it twice, and he's perfect. 
uh, that the, the well, what we know as the hills now, the well wasn't always there actually. It was actually near to the, the ruins of the old nunnery. And apparently, uh, when Cromwell's men actually came to, into the village at the time, they actually, uh, what was the word? They'd done things in the well. It kind of, uh, uh, I think they washed their clothes in it. They'd done different things in it, or whatever it was anyway. But the well was actually moved from there down to where the well is at the moment, uh, as it is now. Like. They actually well. And I think there's a stone actually marking the well. Uh, on the old ruins there. He mentioned the stone, and now he's very familiar because he owned the property, like you know, uh, that property, that land. And then, now when we're just talking about that as well, there were standing stones in the, in the land around there which we were looking for. Apparently, they were there when we didn't see it because we were looking in the wrong place and discovered that. But there were actually three of them, actually. And there's two out in the, in the big field. Yeah, they are just beside it because we have to when we have the gym cannons, we have to put a, a, a tapes there. around. Yes, there, there, for, for there is one there, right? And then the one in the, the field where the nunnery well is, there was one there, but it's actually still there, it was lying on the ground, we didn't see it. And then farther down, uh, the, the fields down uh, next to the forestry below that, there was another one, but it wasn't very high, you know what I mean? It was more or less kind of a rock like, and it's actually. I knew about it, but it just came back to me. But when he mentioned it about the tree of those, what do you call them? Uh, so they used to be se standing, and that put it with cattle and things itching off them. They broke it. They, they broke off. There's a part of it that, and if you, if you, when you, if you were on a horse or thing, or even that you are standing near when a horse would go by, uh, is you'd hear a hollow sound. And his father said to me it was, it was known he said, that there's a, a tunnel from the, the castle in Timon across through that field, out of a tunnel further out the road. But there's no great proof of that, but we, didn't, we never want to go oh, down that far. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but it, that it, but it, the, the hardest sound is definitely there. Also on that same field uh, is right in, and on the entrance from the main road in, into the field. The wall between that and, the, and towards the bank is known to be the oldest wall around. That, that was the, the, the wall around, the part of the wall that was around the town in near Canboy. Now that's the only piece that's standing. And I think there's a curve on the wall, as you think it was only purposely made for going into the gate. But seemingly the old road just crossed down near it. And that was the entrance into the town. If you go back to antique furniture, there's a, a, what they call a wrench table. And that are, it normally is known. It's a, center, it's, a, it's a circular table. And the man that was collecting the rent sat on one side and the other people came in the other and you push the drawer over and they put the money into the drawer and handed it back because the way the, the other fellow wouldn't know how much Oh yes, the, yeah, the, the, yes, the yeah, 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 yeah. That's, uh, well, I you mean, can see the point there, yeah. I mean, that, that table <coughs> goes back to the fact, I used to hold only a small one of them, I just recently that I had bought at an auction and that, and as you said, is we knew it as a rent table but it turned around and on the catalogue with that the day I bought it to turn around is, and I didn't pay a lot for it, like, is uh, it was known as a handsome table. There, there, there's a, there's a, a lady here in town, and, that, and she keeps uh, there's a, a, a thorn bush That's right. directly opposite her house, and she every first of May, uh, first in the uh, dawn, yeah. she goes out and puts coloured paper and coloured rags, and all, as long as they're coloured. And, uh, and, that, and I she's in her nineties now, and she. Yeah. And I didn't know. I didn't know what the meaning of it was. I hadn't. I'd seen it before, but I didn't up close until now. And that, and I asked her, what was the meaning? Or oh, she said they we said they were on the approach roads to the town to keep the evil spirits out. Yeah, you didn't why was uh, because uh, it was bad luck. For to do with it, for to do with it, actually. It's a white bass, like, no. And it turned out, as if you have kittens, 
born in the first week in May. <laughs> They're known as May squealers. Oh yeah, and I, I, I love them. And I have a very good example of that at the moment, because I wouldn't be for drowning kittens. Right. They turned around and I have two little ones that were born on the 3rd of May. And they turned around and the minute they hear me wake in the morning, they're outside the window yowling to be fed. <laughs> and they turned around and I've never heard them. this friend of mine, Mick, used to be saying to me, also oh. saying, they'll be three, two squealers anyway, they were born in the first week of May. Yeah. And it's, they are, uh, and they really no, are. No saying, like, no. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I hadn't heard it before. It was, I wasn't lucky. They like, you know, to, to, to do uh, or to move into a house like on a Saturday, they like, you know. I never heard of that um, one, I, 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 I nearly question that one, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, or, like it's like walking under a ladder, like you know, that kind oh, of yes, thing, like you know. <laughs> I had turn around and that. And I, I have a friend, and if he yeah. met, if he met, if he met uh, the, 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 the uh, as uh, magpies. Oh yes, they turned yeah. around and that, and I, my mother got to go to you, so I said to me, make sure you salute a magpie, and mm. if you have a number of count back from ten back, yeah. and that, and if they're gone out of the area by the time you're back to one, yeah. there'll be nothing happen. But he said, make sure you always salute them anyway, just in case. And they turned around and that, and I said that to a, a playgarding crowd one night. Uh, they turned around and the man turned around and he said, don't, don't you know, said, that's why I, did, I don't turn up to work the other day. And I said, why? Because I want to, if I meet a mate by the road coming to work, I won't go to work. Said, yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm not that bad now. No, I'm, I'm I saluting him and I say good morning or good evening to him and anything but, like that. But uh, there was a saying hmm. as well, have you seen uh, one? But, have you seen one, one magpie, one for sorrow, or two, two for, for joy? Three for wedding uh, and four for, for a bar. Uh, yeah, something like Five that. Five for silver, six for gold, seven for secret, yet untold. Yeah, uh, that's uh, the farthest I can go, I can't go any further. And there was an old saying always goes if you were going to visit a person that had just moved into a new house or into a house fresh, yeah. you always gave him a packet of salt. Uh, as, uh, as a housewarming present, but you could give them other things as yeah. well, but you had to give them the salt anyway, yeah. because the way that they'd be never want in the house. And my brother turned down and he went to get two of them, there was four of them on his farm, and they were out in the land and he was going to get them knocked, and, that, and he asked his brother now, who had a big JCB, to do it. And the JCB, the engine blew out and ran the way down the field to the to do one of them. He got a new one a couple of days later and he turned around on the two wheels bursting her on the way down the lane. That was that. And he, we had a neighbour quite close by which had another one and he wanted to go and put a, a shed or an extension onto a shed where and that and he couldn't with that and he got people to and he had five sons and the, the postman heard he was going to because he had, a, he had to put up a planning permission to get yeah. this thing done yeah. and he, for, he got the planning permission. But he turned around but, uh, to, to build this, to, the extension to the shed. But if he did, he went and uh, the postman and several neighbours and everything begged him not to, to, to touch it because he'd lose his, his sons. And he already laughed at him. And he said, I should I five him anyway? And he turned around inside the month. He went to, and he already took a, bit, a very small bit out of it. And that when his machine broke down, and he turned around and inside the month, his five sons were dead in one way or another. And they were with, within my own family, so I can vote for that. I heard of a case outside, outside of outside of Timon actually, and going back. And uh, as I said, it's not too far outside of Timon. I was actually going through the story as I was passing by the place there not long ago. I can't mention the name of the place. There's no one actually living there, but the area is in. But um, it was a, a traveller lady. The, at that time, years ago, they used to stay on the side of the road. They lived, in, they lived in tents, and they were very poor. There were lots of them very poor. They were lived in tents because I remember just outside the village here myself, like they lived in caravans. You know the old covered caravans, which you might see some of them. But that time, like when I was a kid growing up, and around the village, the travellers would have stayed outside of the villages, like the you know I mean? and they want about their, their they, they want about their daily their daily life, whatever the way they done. They made their tins and can, tin cans, like and whatever they done. But anyway, this place actually, it was a place, a um, big house, and they were living on the side of the road, actually. I could actually, I know her taste, I was only passing, as I said, passing by, and I was telling my wife about the story that I heard, that 
this trouble lady went down and she had a very sick child and she uh, she asked for some she asked for some milk or something for the child and um, uh, she was turned away but apparently the child was very sick possibly might have died like no but she said anyway to the person that was in the house uh, she said well she says I I think the way she put it was she says, I see the day, she said, you'll never have children of your own. Like, do you know what I mean? That kind of a, uh, that's what she said. But apparently it turned out that they, they never had kids, they never had children of their own. Like, it was like, my wife said to me, was, was it like, was like a curse, like, it was just a, it was a, you know what I mean? I suppose you could take it up in different ways, like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, but the way, when she was turned away for, turned away and her child was very sick, like, and, uh, but she was turned away and she, she didn't give her any, but apparently the child died or something. Like that, 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 that happened was, just with like Chuck and Gory. Yeah. They turned around, I know the family. They Personally. turned around, they said that she turned around and she said there would never be an heir born in the place for five generations. Yes, that's... Uh, the, 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 the sixth generation is in it, no, and there is no heir. But this... But this it's been handed down to nephews, 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 yeah. down the rank and all, no, no family. Yeah. My own grandfather and grandmother were saved by that by a horse not doing that. During the trouble times they came or coming home from doing their shopping. Yeah. And they turned around they came around the corner where there used to be a bridge. Yeah. And they turned around and the during er, the that earlier in the day the bridge had been blown up. Yeah. And they turned around and uh, the horse reared up and wouldn't go around the corner. And my grandfather got out to lead him and if he did he came around the corner and there he could see the bridge was gone. And he gave me a tap and a pat and turned him round on the road and went safely home. A, lo a lot longer journey, but they got home safely. But it's simply told you, because the horse stopped, as you yeah, said, you know, the, the, the horse stopped that saved him. If the horse kept going, they ever did. Now, as I was, I was told, the first Friday night of the month, if it, if it fell, if the 13th fell on a Friday, yeah. it turned down, there was, there was always seen a fire at the end of. Uh, and people sitting around us at the end of that lane. Yeah. I'm afraid I was did the fool, I don't know whether it was the fool or otherwise, but <laughs> I went and I looked there several fr Friday nights and I saw nothing. <coughs> but uh, as such, yeah. when I went down on the Saturday morning one night, or one weekend, and yet there, there was a sign of a fire on the, on the ground. But then again, that in the corner of my own garden, I think I was said about this before, that there was um, a line of mushrooms around in a ring. And I showed it to a person and they said, oh, that's a, fa a fairy ring. Yeah. Don't touch it. <laughs> that like turned around. And my little dog would go out and he'd go, he'd stand in the middle of the lawn and he'd start to bark at that car. Not too far outside the village, there was a lady. And I believe that the, the, she had a medal, actually. It was a medal, but the medal is more down to maybe a, it's just it's way for tin now. It's after been used over the years, but she had the cure as well, and she had the, she had the cure for a, a ringworm and different rashes, and she she actually rubbed the medal on it, and she had it actually it did work like, and I believe that the medal still exists by some some member of the family or was handed down to somebody you know over the generations, generation after generation. But I believe the medal still exists because people come from near and far for to use the medal. Just to rub the medal. Like I've seen because I went with my father in time gone years gone by, and he actually went. He has a he had a ringworm of whatever it was, and he went out to her and he believes in it. And the, the old lady passed away, but as I said, they handed down, handed down. But the medal had just wore that tin from the use of it over the generation you know, in the years like you know but it was another story of uh, the people having cures but this actually did work like mm -hmm. well i believe it did anyway and <laughs> and uh, she was very well known as i said like from because there's always known that if, if you're shingles yes that's and go, yes and then uh, they turned around there was, there was like that lady that's i very, know uh, yes. to do it as well yeah, yeah. And that, but there was also a, a, a person as long as there was a maguire in the in na person had a maguire yeah. name yeah they said as long as they'd got Pick their finger like you would for other things. Uh, that and that little bit of blood from a Maguire yeah. and rubber where the shingles are. 
trodde att det gick klart och svinkels. Och det mäter man ju från det samma. Det samma ting. Det samma. Det var, men det still existerade på de mäter sig till det. Ivar Fring, Lasse, well known George Graham. He does the 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 Ireland sheep shearing champion, yeah. and he turned on his father before him himself. Now again, he's been handed on to him that if they that and they have those and corn, I think it is that they're black anyway, hens and yeah. cocks. Oh yes. And he just as long as he gets the blood off the corn, the comb of one of them. Yes. The piece on the top of the head, which is known as the comb, just to give that a little scratch and get a bit of blood and rub it where the shingles are, uh, is uh, cures him. And also the turf, the frucus, but he doesn't. The, the where the frucus concerned, he doesn't put anything on him. He just makes sure that he has the right number of the frucus that the person has, and he cracks straws to the, the however many the the frucus are there. He'll put that many cracks on the straw, and inside three days the frucus are gone. And I, an awful lot of people I know have that has worked with.